In the African respects, I think we need to build up the infrastructure to begin with. So before we even start thinking about blockchain and a whole range of other exciting emerging tech, we have to have the right, for example, infrastructure systems in place. We need to create an ecosystem and an economy, a digital economy that allows for that uh, connectivity to happen. Hey guys, don't forget to check out our community app. It's the first not-for-profit app where you can predict, learn, and earn Bitcoin with zero risk. Test it out, especially if you're afraid of investing money, your own money, this is the perfect portal. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we are live from Davos Tech Park Summit with some amazing guests. And without further ado, let me introduce you to first, this time we have two guests, Charlene, co-founder of BitPeza, lovely to meet you, and Michelle, board member at African Union Digital Task Force. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes, yes. I got it right. Woo -hoo. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into it, ladies. So this is gonna be a really exciting uh, edition because we're gonna dive deep into Africa specifically. Let's stop talking about ETFs in America and all these things. Let's talk about real use cases and things that really matter in terms of the whole adoption and, and how we can evolve. So without further ado, there's no one better than to ask you, Michelle, about Africa, the big picture, and then specific countries and cities, if you don't mind sure. educating us. Sure, no, it's fantastic to be here. I'm just, I have to con congratulate you for your fantastic channel, right? Oh, it's so exciting, guys. Um, but no, certainly I think Africa has massive opportunities. A lot of people think of Africa as, uh, as a continent where you go and uh, give, you know, and you try and help and, you know, look at charities. But Africa has really transformed from all that. There's massive business opportunities in general. And certainly when we're looking at the digital economy, uh, as I said, you know, when you're looking at things like blockchain, uh, AI, quantum computing, there's so many exciting projects that are coming up. The government is creating some very incredible sort of uh, friendly environments for businesses to come in, be it crypto businesses or blockchain businesses. There are a number of countries that are very progressive around the whole blockchain space. Uh, and some of these are places like Rwanda, Nigeria, Ethiopia. In fact, some of these countries are the fastest growing economies in the world. You know, so Africa is very much ready to do business around uh, crypto. But also, I think the opportunities with Africa is that you have a very young continent. You know, a lot of Africa has people under the age of 30, for example, all quite tech, they're very tech savvy. Most people, probably 80% of Africans own mobile phones. In fact, Kenya, for example, created the Impesa. Uh, you know, a revolution, which is very much more about money payments. So we're very familiar uh, with working with digital uh, solutions in Africa. So, you know, certainly Africa, I think, is very well placed. In terms of blockchain specifically, I think blockchain has a massive opportunities in Africa in terms of the implementation. So what's happening in Africa at the minute is we're actually opening up, probably creating the next biggest single market in Africa where we are using the free trade area agreement uh, with the African Union. We're looking at that and providing opportunities for new jobs and opportunities around digital economy and we're really very much cementing that and trying to encourage more young people to take up opportunities in STEM, more young women to take up opportunities in STEM uh, and also to create the next uh, you know, generation of uh, tech solutions which involve obviously blockchain, AI, quantum and a whole range of other exciting products and in fact today I'm sitting next door to Big Peza who are amazing and I've been doing some fantastic stuff in Africa and I'll let Charlene come in and uh, talk a little bit about Definitely that. Definitely an amazing story Charlene. You guys have done some amazing things and you have the ethics, you have the principles, you have the values. Please share your perspective as well. I'm really excited to hear more about BitPiz and what you guys have done there. Well, thanks so much, Alex. We're really proud of all the progress that BitPiz has made over the last six years. Um, so we were proud to be one of the earliest uh, adopters of Bitcoin and blockchain technology on the continent. Uh, we first launched with a Bitcoin remittances product uh, in Kenya. So it allowed anyone in the world to uh, pay Bitcoin on our website and then instantly M-Pesa would pop out the other side. Uh, but now we pivoted to more of a B2B model. Um, so we're actually leveraging uh, Bitcoin and uh, blockchain technology to enable payments to uh, areas of the world where we don't have liquidity. So for example, China, uh, Dubai, um, 
North America. So we uh, can essentially allow anyone um, in the world who wants to make a payment uh, to settle as local currency in one of the African markets where we operate. Um, for example, Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, South Africa to settle local currency to us. And then we set Bitcoin over the blockchain to a global network of counterparties and they instantly settle into local currency. Fantastic. So can you ladies tell me why remittances, why microtransactions? What it seems like that was the core goal. Uh, why is this important as of today? Please educate us a little bit on, on that. Specific. Sure, I'll start out. I mean, one of the reasons why we looked at the remittances market is because um, the remittances to Africa are significantly more expensive than anywhere else in the world. And, and things have improved, but at one point, the average remittance cost was 12% compared to a global average of 6%. Um, so. Frontier markets really disproportionately suffer from high transaction costs, um, and that's due to a number of reasons. Um, so now that we're no longer a retail business, we seek to serve um, lowering the cost of remittances by working with remittance companies. So we work with licensed money transfer companies across Europe and North America um, through a white label API that they can integrate into. And we'll do last mile distribution to mobile money wallets and bank accounts across Africa. Very cool. It, do, you, do you see that as a good problem Absolutely. to solve? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I think what Bipesa has been doing for some time actually is creating opportunity, you know, in terms of access to liquidity. You know, a lot of countries in Africa, you, well, maybe not a lot, but you, you take, for example, Zimbabwe, where you obviously have an issue with Forex. Uh, you know, it's very, very difficult for people to access uh, liquidity. And I think what Bipesa has said forward is actually an opportunity to create opportunities for people to actually transact and continue to do business and interact uh, you know, through their platforms and they're able to engage with other markets, which is absolutely important. When you're thinking about you know, new markets and access to markets, it's very, very difficult sometimes to transition uh, from one market to the other. And I think you're creating a platform that allows for that to happen. Uh, so certainly I'd love to see a little bit more, um, uh, you know, sort of companies coming up with solutions like this uh, to create opportunities for young African entrepreneurs, uh, SMEs, uh, especially, you know, women-led SMEs and businesses to be able to access international markets and not be limited by the fact that they can't transact because of, you know, certain currency issues or forex issues. So absolutely needed in a market and I think you're doing a phenomenal job and, and certainly there's uh, other companies I think are starting to look into this space. Uh, payments is still very much uh, an area where you have a lot of fintechs that are coming into payments. Uh, you know, it's, it's a major solution, I think. And then if we're going to drive Africa forward, we have to be able to open up the doors for African uh, businesses to transact internationally and vice versa as well. You know, have companies from across the world to come and do business in Africa because there are massive opportunities in Africa. I think there's just a lack of understanding as to what is actually in Africa. You know, it's not about aid and, and trade anymore. It's about equal level playing field uh, business investments. So the um, BitPesa is allowing that to happen, which is fantastic. That is definitely fantastic. Yeah. So we have microtransactions, we have payments infrastructure with blockchain and crypto. Are there any other use cases where you really feel like this is really critical for Africa and this has helped a lot or maybe anything on, on that angle that you have perhaps? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll certainly I think, you know, from my end, I think when you're looking at think, uh, healthcare, for example, uh, we're talking about blockchain. I think when you're using blockchain, for example, healthcare in Africa, I think it's really, really relevant. Uh, there's a company, I think, called Golex in Zimbabwe, which is a, a, an exchange, a crypto exchange, which again allows opportunity for people to use cryptocurrency uh, to transact and do business with each other because they don't have access to Forex. So it's little solutions like that that are coming up into the marketplace. Rwanda, I know, is doing some phenomenal stuff around the, uh, the space and certainly are using blockchain for land registry uh, and a whole range of other things. The government is very proactive and very supportive. And I have to emphasize that. I think the government has to be very proactive and very supportive of uh, innovation. Otherwise, you know, we struggle to get the innovation that we need. And if we don't have the uh, right environment or climate uh, you know, to allow for that innovation to happen, innovators will move from one country to the other to, do, to deploy their solutions. As a result, we're losing the GDP that we can create from having those innovators in that country. So very, very important. I think government definitely have a big role to play to support that to, to happen. Beautifully put, beautifully. Charlene, you actually lived in, in Africa for, was it more than 10 years, right? Over a decade? Oh, well, I wouldn't take that much credit. Um, <laughs> I, I first ended up working in Africa um, during a summer internship 
uh, in 2008 at an internet services provider in Accra. Uh, and then after business school, I ended up moving to East Africa to work with small scale farmers. So um, I moved to London uh, in 2015 uh, to expand Bitpass's business to the UK and Europe. Um, you know, I think certainly blockchain technology, um, like any technology, has a lot of potential use cases when applied appropriately. Um, in addition to the financial applications, which of course BitPesa is engaging in, I'm excited about things that are non-financial applications, for example, land registry or any scenario where uh, records are predominantly done on paper. Another example would be health records. I did a health project in Ghana where uh, I went to a number of health clinics and all of the patient records are on stacks of paper in dusty filing cabinets. So, you know, I think we really take electronic medical records for granted, but I think that applies at anywhere else in the world where we have different you know, doctors and, and physicians, but we can't really port our, our records anywhere. Um, so I'm really excited about the potential applications, but I definitely think we should be uh, going with a user-centric approach to make sure we understand the need of the end user or customer. What are the limitations as of today where you feel like, oh, this is good, but you know, it could be better. I wish this was better. Like, are there any roadblocks or challenges that you, you really think we should try to uh, be able to go down, to take take down in, in Africa? Yeah, 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 no. I mean, in terms of challenges, I, I think I'll look at it from the angle of the overall digital economy in Africa, specifically. I think some of the things we're certainly looking at from the African Union end is actually trying to create an ecosystem where we have obviously the government players, you've got the regulators, you've got the uh, innovators starting to collaborate and work together to find the solutions around challenges, things like regulation, for example. You know, how do we regulate a space, for example, where uh, it's fairly new space, of course, from the government end, but from the innovation end, you know, we're moving at a very fast pace. So how do we ensure that, you know, each party is, uh, you know, is involved in that uh, um, engagement around regulation, but also the issues around sort of scale I mean, for me, what I really want to see this coming year in 2020, uh, I've been in the blockchain space for quite a long time, yeah. uh, but what I want to see in 2020 to actually make this a reality is to see that convergence. You know, when I'm talking about convergence, you're think, thinking about, you know, how do we, for example, ensure that you, blockchain is not in isolation. Blockchain is one, two, and it's not applicable everywhere, right? You know, there are many other sort of technologies that can work in par with blockchain that can actually have massive impact. You know, when you're talking about things like AI, uh, you know, quantum computing, uh, big data, IoT devices that are coming in. How do we ensure there's some sort of level of convergence as well, you know, to ensure that there's delivery with impact? Uh, that's certainly something that I'm looking forward to, and I think I'm starting to see a little bit of that happening in 2020. Uh, you know, certainly there'll be a lot more emphasis around enterprise blockchain, for example. And certainly in Africa, in the, in the African respects, I think we need to build up the infrastructure to begin with. So before we even start thinking about blockchain and a whole range of other exciting emerging tech, we have to have the right, for example, infrastructure systems in place. We have to think about data flows. You know, we have to have the right quality of data in, in place in order to, you know, for blockchain to function anyway. Uh, so, you know, it's little things like that. Uh, we need to create an ecosystem and an economy a digital economy that allows for that uh, connectivity to happen. Uh, so that, that is really important, yeah. So many important points that you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with the regulatory kind of clarity side that it's something that we, we want to advance more and in terms of, you know, adoption? And yeah, I think when it comes to regulation, uh, a clarity around blockchain technology or cryptocurrency would certainly be very useful. I think what we're seeing right now is a, a delineation between the two, even though at least uh, decentralized um, cryptocurrency very much you know, is blockchain technology and vice versa. Um, so I think regulatory clarity around um, blockchain technology or cryptocurrencies would be really helpful. One of the ways that we look at it is looking at the payment systems regulation that already exists in each African market and then seeing how, how can a company like ours fit into that policy. I mean, we still hold ourselves to the same know your customer anti-money laundering, counter financing of terrorism. So we uphold ourselves to the same policies that any FCA regulated or EU regulated company would hold themselves to. So I think uh, regulation is one important point. Um, I think more financial infrastructure. 
so on ramps and off ramps to cryptocurrencies. So right now there's only a handful of cryptocurrency exchanges on the African continent. And you know that um, onboarding is usually, I mean, in some cases, peer-to-peer -peer networks via cash. In other cases, it's through mobile money networks. Other cases, it's through a bank switch. So it varies a lot from country to country. So we need that financial infrastructure. Um, and I think secondarily, we need liquidity. And that's kind of tied to the first piece. If there's a lack of infrastructure and companies who are providing that on and off ramp, there's not much liquidity of digital assets in the market, whatever you're trading. Uh, and then I think thirdly, it's about, um, you know, just like the technical capabilities. So I think there's an aspect of can we have tech talent on the continent that is implementing blockchain solutions as opposed to what we often see, which is technology that's developed off outside of the continent and then brought, you know, to the continent. So we feel really lucky that we have an amazing team, most of which was recruited from places like Nairobi, Kenya, or Lagos, Nigeria, uh, where we currently have some of our engineering teams. So we're starting to see things change. I'd be, love to hear what you think, Absolutely. but I think having uh, more talent in Absolutely. the space is really exciting. I think Charlene has hit the nail on the head, actually, because I mean, one of the, the main challenges in Africa, I think, is more around sort of liquidity. So I've met some phenomenal entrepreneurs, and you know who you are, because I've seen you guys in different countries, Kenya, Nairobi, you know, uh, Nigeria, and I've just been fascinated by what they're doing, because they have so little support. They've got very little liquidity. You know, which is a very, very important point, but they are still carrying on and doing, coming up with these solutions. You know, so one of the th calls I have certainly made time and time again is actually we need to start supporting these entrepreneurs, which goes back to your point around talent. You know, if we can kind of scale up talent, we've got a very youthful continent, I said earlier on. You know, if we can build on the talent, we can invest in talent development and also support the entrepreneurs who are coming up with the next generation of solutions, uh, then I think we're in for a winner. Um, you know, the other point around liquidity, we have a whole range. I mean, I always say money is not necessarily an issue. Money is there in the world. There's a lot of wealth across the world, but how that wealth is shared and redistributed across uh, different continents is a challenge and the access to wealth is the challenge, you know, because I mean, I've been to, for example, in the Baltics and the Nordics, where there's a lot of wealth and a lot of people who are thinking, well, what do I do with my wealth? How can I invest my wealth so I can get some returns? It's not just about financial returns, you know, anymore. I think it's about, you know, the social returns and you being able to do good for the rest of the world. So we need to be a little bit more creative about how we use our, our, uh, our finance, right? And how we ensure that liquidity flows across the continent. Uh, and also the other really important point is about internally driven liquidity. So we of course talk about foreign direct investments coming from all parts of the world, but what we're trying to encourage as well is a, a lot more sort of, you know, a stronger capital markets in Africa and building those stronger capital markets, you know, a, a encouraging more venture capitalists in Africa, you know, uh, and more women venture capitalists in Africa. I'm quite excited by things like that, right? Uh, you know, we need to create that sort of internally driven, um, uh, you know, market to allow for these Young entrepreneurs, the SMEs, the, you know, the, these are the engines of growth for these economies, right? So we need to equip them with the skills, with the liquidity, and a whole range of other things. BitPesa cannot do it on its own. So, yeah, you know, we need to kind of jump in and, and, and try and uh, contribute. Let's go help, guys. Come Definitely. on, let's do Come it. Help. Don't let them alone. <laughs> let's do it. There are massive <laughs> opportunities in Africa. You know, Africa is not about give, guys. You know, there are massive business opportunities. And if you don't interact with Africa, which is, by the way, the next future growth continent, you will be missing out a lot, and then you have to play catch up. China is certainly in there already. Oh, that's fabulous. So. <laughs> and speaking about people yeah. helping each other, so mm -hmm. we, had a, we had an episode with Maria from Luno in the right. first season, and uh, she was telling me about, she showed us statistics on how awareness, like cryptocurrency and Bitcoin mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. in different like, uh, African countries, and the awareness was so high. Especially around the crypto space. Especially in the crypto space. Especially around the crypto space. You know, a lot of people have asked me, it's like, oh, but I'm sure you talk about, you know, in emerging markets, they're using crypto. They, you know, crypto is quite important. I'm like, yes, it is important. Unless you've kind of been in these countries where people are kind of desperate, sometimes they have no other opportunities. And they start looking for opportunities using crypto, for example. For them, it's not just about, oh, you know, sort of fluctuations, valuations with Bitcoin and all that. No, it's almost kind of like survival. 
to a certain level because you cannot access the dollar or you're so reliant on the dollar. I would like to move away from that slightly when we're looking at the future, right? No, no reliance on any single currency. Uh, and I think that's what I like about what you guys are doing. It's not necessarily I have to just wait on getting the dollar in order for me to do business, in order for me to go feed my family, you know, for me to send my children to school. I mean, come on, we have we have to look at the more sort of decentralized model to allow everybody else around the world to have access to wealth. And I think that's why I am in this space. That's what drives me every day to, to do what I do, because I, I can see the potential. You know, and we need to ensure that we facilitate that growth and we need to do that by allowing that decentralization uh, a little bit and, and, and providing the solutions. I mean, they're there. So. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. and I can feel the passion, you know, yes. when you're talking, it's yes. like, raw. there's like an aura of energy. I promise, we didn't pay her to say that. No, no, no one paid me to do anything. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Any comments on that, like, Charlene, that you want to... I think that's great. I mean, I would just wrap that up by saying it takes an ecosystem. Uh, certainly, you know, even though we've been doing it for six years, we're not alone. There's other players in the ecosystem. Uh, like Luno that we're excited to see grow and thrive in their respective markets. Um, but yeah, it, it's a whole ecosystem at every layer. Uh, it goes to banks being willing to bank uh, companies that are operating in the Bitcoin or blockchain space. Uh, it engages uh, other private sector companies who may be providing uh, last mile uh, distribution. Um, you know, telecoms are involved from the mobile money perspective, bank switches um, for the direct de deposit uh, angle as well um, to the regulators. So I think it's a, really a multi-stakeholder approach. Um, and it's that age old balance between, uh, you know, innovation um, and the necessary parameters to allow that innovation to happen in an environment that protects all parties involved. So I'm excited for what the future holds for, for a bit PESA um, on the African continent, even though you know, we expanded to other frontier markets, it's definitely the core of our earliest business and we're really proud to be part of the journey. That's so beautifully summarized. I love those key points. Any other key points or things, a message you'd like no, to share, No, I think Michelle? I've kind of really highlighted quite a lot, actually. But I, I, I mean, echoing Charlene here, I think that the opportunities are massive, you know. And, and I think with the digital economy, the difference with the digital economy is that we no longer have to sit and wait, uh, either for a government or a bank or somebody to kind of, you know, allow you to do certain things. Here, you can be very, very creative. You know, you can use the technology or the tools, uh, not just blockchain. I mean, blockchain is important, don't get me wrong. I'm the biggest champion of blockchain, uh, you know, but I think there are other sort of digital tools within the digital economy that we can use, we can leverage to do things slightly better, faster. And more importantly, I think most importantly is that we're making it inclusive. So we're making it inclusive for those that have not necessarily had a voice, have not had opportunity in the past to start creating their own little bit of wealth. And by doing that, then we are supporting not just necessarily Africa, we're supporting the world to actually develop. And I think that's in the interest of every single person sitting here so, uh, and the rest of the world. So I don't Absolutely. see what the big, um, yeah, the big issue would be. So yeah, that's it. Ladies, you rocked my world today. Seriously, I just felt like I just lay back and just listen. You know, you didn't even need me in this show, actually. Amazing stuff. And so if you want to follow you, reach out to you, like what is the best tool, social media, where we can contact you directly like Michelle yeah yeah no for me I mean I'm, I'm you know LinkedIn Instagram Twitter uh, you know Michelle Chivunga N you find me on LinkedIn uh, and I also do of course Twitter as well you find me quite easily um, and by email just Michelle at the policyhouse.com thank you so much and you Charlene and for me LinkedIn always works um, Charlene Chen C-H-E-N um, and for Bitpesa at Bitpesa on Twitter uh, and Facebook it's Bitpesa LTD Thank you so much, ladies. And if you have any comments, don't forget to put them below. We'll try to get the ladies to respond. I'll, I'll bother them as much as I can. <laughs> Subscribe, comment, and definitely tune in next week, premiering at every PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. Thank you so much, guys, and see you soon.